This is plastic milk. Okay, the plastic milk experiment. Okay, so first of all, we need milk, of course. So here we have in this jug here, we have 250 milliliters of full cream milk. So it's whole milk, full cream milk. Here I have some just ordinary vinegar, brown vinegar. And I've got a few more bits and pieces. I've got a stirring spoon. I've got a little teaspoon here, as you can see, a sieve, another jug, a couple of paper plates here. I'll be using one or two of those. And of course, we've got a little tabletop cooker unit here. I do recommend you do this in the kitchen, of course, with a proper cooker. Though obviously, if you have one of these, you can. It's not especially messy. Just be safe. Obviously, heat, growing up help, etc. I've got a milk pan here a milk saucepan. This is the, we've already switched this on. This one's on right now, that's not. So I've left that there, but I'm, I'll hold this now. So what I want you to do, I'm gonna take you through it. Let's move some of these things out of the way so you can see what I'm gonna do, okay? And I'll describe it, of course, as I go along. First thing I'm gonna do is pour the milk into the milk pan, okay? First thing. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of vinegar maybe about four or so teaspoons. I want a, about 20 mil, but you might think about how much that could change. It's gonna be approximate, because I'm just gonna pour it on the spoon. Of course, some of it's gonna dribble off. If you've got one of those medicine spoons, they're not bad for this, but I'm just using this right now. I'm gonna pour it in and I'm gonna heat it up on here. And then I'll talk you through it as we go along the rest of it. So let's pour some in. Okay, remember, just about four, the equivalent to about four teaspoons. I'm getting a bit of a spillage here, but that's okay. Okay. okay, that'll do. Now I'm gonna put it onto my heat source. Remember, this is already switched on. Please be sensible. And with my stirrer, I'm just gonna stir it as it gets heated up. Now keep an eye on this. Things are gonna happen pretty swiftly. Now if I just tip it up a bit, you might be able to see a little bit. It's already getting lumpy. Look at that, really lumpy straight away, pretty much. But I'm gonna keep going, heat up a bit more. Let's see what that eventually does. So keep stirring, keep stirring. It's heating up as we go here, of course. Oops, a little bit came out there. Now, I don't know if you can see very well here, but the liquid around those little lumps is getting clearer and clearer. If I tip it over, you may go see it's getting clearer. And now, quite quickly, the little lumpy bits that were there initially start clumping together even more into bigger clumps. And the liquid surrounding it becomes clearer still. I'm just gonna stir it for a little bit longer. Okay, so we're heating it more. Right, now, with all those little lumps and bits floating around, I want to sieve them off. So, what I'll actually do, I think, is I'm going to use this for a minute, because I don't want liquid. All I want are the bits floating in the liquid. Now, some of them, of course, will fall through here, but I'm hoping I'll catch a lot of them, the bigger bits especially. bad and we'll put on a cold one okay so here we have some of this now what I'm going to do is tip the little lumpy bits into the other one okay I'll just move that to there just a minute and then just with my spoon I'm going to just spread it out a little bit And then I'm just gonna pour on just a little bit more vinegar, just a couple of spoons. Just wanna sprinkle it on. Maybe one more for luck. Oops, more than one more for luck there. Let's pour that back. And what I want to do is just leave that little mixture there 
for about one or two hours, let's say two hours, and we'll come back and see what's happened in two hours. And then we've got one more thing for you to do. So just watch carefully. You can get to this point if you want, but you need to leave it there for about two hours. So here we are, back with the plastic milk. After a couple of hours, remember I said you had to leave it for a couple of hours, so I'm going to pour out any extra liquid that was lurking around. Do you remember I just poured a little bit more vinegar in? It's not very much, to be honest. I'm going to just put my finger there, just because I want to catch any of the stuff that comes out. Hardly any. Okay. Now, last thing you've got to do, it's a bit mucky now, to be honest, but hey, mucky science, we love it. I want you to use your fingers and just get the stuff that's in here, all this white stuff, or not so much white anymore, and start kneading it. I'm giving it a bit of a squeeze, actually. There's a little bit of liquid still there. I'm going to give it a bit of a squeeze. You can probably see the liquid in the jar. Give it a bit of a squeeze in my hand. Okay. And I'm actually going to hold it over this plate. But this stuff, we need to give it a bit of a squeeze. And it takes a few minutes to do this. You've got to push it together and squeeze it mold it together. Now, you've got to run it through your fingers a little bit on this one. Okay, so I'm going to run it between, move that out of the way a little bit. And as you can see, it's a little bit messy, but hey, it's not that bad. Wipe this stuff up, no problem. So squidge it through your fingers. Now, what I want you to do, and this is the last part, and this is a bit that takes you a bit more time, and I'm not going to be able to do this completely in front of you now, but you've seen the most important part. I want you to carry on doing this, okay? And in a little while, a few minutes, it will start going a bit more like paste, but you're running through your fingers. You hopefully, it's still a bit fibrous at the moment, but in a few minutes, it will turn into a more like a paste-like material. It's already going, look, you can already see it's going more paste-like as I squidge it about, more paste-like, okay? Before it was lots more little bits like this around the plate. Still is like that in some ways, but of course I'm trying to get it into a paste type formation. So much more of a paste. So we do it a little bit longer till you get it into a paste where it holds its shape. And that's pretty much doing that now, where it holds its shape. And then I want you to turn it into a very simple shape. It doesn't matter what, just do a little blob. It doesn't really matter what you do. I mean, in fact, if you want, you can just keep it like this. There's no reason you'd make it in any particular shape. I'll leave you to be creative there. So once it gets a little bit more like putty, turn it into some sort of shape that's pleasing to you. And then, this is the best I'm gonna do right now, to be honest. I'll leave my creativity away right now. I'm just gonna make a little pile of blob there just to show you that it is possible to shape it. And mine's not complete yet anyway, so you can move it around a bit more and it'd be easier to keep in shape. So make a simple shape and leave it. And you're gonna to have to leave it for a few days, okay? So once you're happy with what you've done, bit of an effort there, I know. But once you're happy with what you've done, I want you to place it somewhere safe where nobody's gonna disturb it. And I'd suggest leaving it for four, three or four, maybe even five days and come back and see what's happened. <laughs> So here we are, some time later, I've even washed my t-shirt, here we are with our little blob here, and it's a bit harder than it was before, I'm not going to handle it, I just need to have a look at it. So what's going on? By now, four or five days later, it should be much harder than it was when you first made it, I hope, and you should have been able to actually have a look at it closely. What's going on? How come it can go hard after a few days and it started off like this putty stuff? What's going on? Well, let's think back a little bit to the early part of the experiment. Let me remind you of some of the things we did. Do you remember we started off with vinegar and we had milk, so we had 250 ml of milk. We put four spoons of uh, vinegar into it. We heated it on the cooker. We stirred it, we got those little blobs come out and we sieved them off, didn't we? So we got the blobs and we put it through a sieve. The liquid went into the uh, container below and we ended up with a sieve full of little blobs, okay? Now those blobs are curds. Heard of curds and whey? I think you probably have, have a little think. You made curds and whey in this experiment. So the blobs are the curds. The whey is the liquid that poured through that we didn't use. Now the blobs is made mostly of the protein that was in the milk. So milk has got sugar, 
proteins, other things too. But the protein is the bit we're interested in this experiment. It's called casein, that's its actual name, casein. And those blobs, that uh, curds that you've got into a little sieve, was it in its basic form, if you like. And it's totally edible, by the way. That's actually, um, cottage cheese is made from the same stuff. So what did we do? Do you remember? We poured it out into a container, I mashed it down a bit, and I put a little bit more vinegar on. So what was going on? Well, the vinegar is acidic, and what the vinegar does, that separates out the casein from milk in, in the experiment we did, okay? So we ended up with the casein curds. But I wanted to make it work a bit better, so I put a bit more vinegar on, and the acid carried on in a chemical reaction and got a little bit more of the casein there in a quite a nice concentrated form. We left it for a couple of hours, it took a bit of time for the reaction to take place. And when I came back, you noticed there wasn't much of the vinegar there. We squeezed a bit out, but not very much. So the chemical reaction had changed it a bit more, got a little bit more solid. And then we took it out and we started moulding it. So essentially you've made let's say, a milk-based plastic. Now the word plastic these days is applied to a material we use oil as a base to make. So most modern plastics are made out of oil or using oil. In the olden days, we never used to use oil. We used to use plant materials, milk and other things too. And you've done in a way what we used to do in the old days. So you've made, using milk, plastic milk. Okay, variables, what could we change? Well, of course, you got some clues straight away with the ingredients that we used right at the start. Remember the numbers we used, 250 ml of milk, for example. How about changing some of those to see what happens? Remember, if you change a measurement of one thing, try and keep everything else the same if you can. That's really important. So change one thing, see what happens. Think about now we've got to the stage of making the stuff when you were kneading it in your fingers earlier on. Hopefully you got it to a bit more of a paste-like form than I did when I first did it, because I did it fairly quickly. It does take a good few minutes to do that, kneading it around. I just made a little blob there with my fingers, just piling it together as a little blob and left it and carefully. We just left this for a while and now you've got this. Of course, how about, supposing I've got, say, some plasticine soft plasticine, actually better still, might be something like blue tack, it's softer still usually, but plasticine's okay, and made a little mould first, so make a little mould, and then once you're happy with the mould, so some hollow shape, you pack it out with that stuff. You know, once you've first made it in that paste form, pack it out with it, leave it somewhere for a few days, and then gently, gently, carefully, carefully, carefully remove the plasticine, see what you've made for yourself. Something I've never tried. I wonder if it'll work. I'll leave you to try this, and I really, really haven't tried it. I've been reliably informed that you can paint them. A bit like a model or a toy. You can paint them. But what I don't know is what paint to use. They didn't tell me what paint works. So there you go. I've told you what to do, but I don't know what paint works. So that could be a variable straight away. Paint it, see what paint works and what maybe doesn't. Maybe all paint works, I don't know. I'm sure you can think of a few other things.